In the last two episodes, I bought the stolen gold Ram SEMA truck and announced the plan to fuse mall crawler and mini truck styling into the mega mini truck. In this episode, we begin the work on the dancing box, suicide doors, and I learned hand engraving from an OG master. It is time to do a walk around. Got the Gen 5 front end on here off of that rolled 2021. Got the air suspension out front. We're actually building all new upper arm brackets here for it so that we can get it to the exact height that we want it. In the back here, we've got our box, which will not be sitting like this for the show. It is going to be 15 feet in the air, spinning around and dancing and doing its thing. Going to be a full hydraulic setup. And then we've got the suspension is all on bags. We'll be stripping the entire box so that it's just two box sides and then a tailgate shell and then putting a tonneau cover on the top of it. And then all of the inside of the box will actually be the mechanics for the dancing bed setup. It won't be a very useful box, but that's fine. That's not really the point of it either. It's for show. And then we've got the suicide doors. Here's the actual suicide door kit. Interior's not getting a whole lot done to it because it's already done for the most part. Looks really nice. Don't tell me right into SEMA 2022 to scope out lowrider paint jobs and dancing beds. Because at this point, the plan was to debut the Mega Mini at SEMA 2023. Looking for some ideas. When I bought the Mega Mini, I hated the gold paint, but after everything it's been through, I knew it had to stay. That's not to say I couldn't put my own twist on it though. So as soon as I connected my search to gold lowrider styling, I knew exactly what had to be done. Gold. Oh, this thing is beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. I love this paint job. Look at that gold. <laughs> I love gold. I also stumbled on this truck at SEMA 2022 and it stood out to me because it had already been bitten by the lowrider bug, being half covered in a magnificent piece of lowrider art. I knew I couldn't be the first to have this idea. And although I was hoping to be the first to implement this style, it's nice to see that others see the same natural evolution of subcultures merging that I see and that there are clearly other people out there interested in this style. 2022 was also the first and only year that SEMA had a mini truck showcase. I spent a lot of time here soaking up as much information as I could. Yeah! Yes! Yeah! <laughs> the merry-go-round. All three trucks use completely different dancing bed setups, meaning I needed to take lots of videos like this to share with Kale so we can figure out how the Mega Minis assembly will actually go together because there is a lot going on. No surprise at all to see these guys running Hoppo's equipment. And shout out to Marlon and Patty for keeping mini trucking alive. Back home and I started working with 8S Creations to design the digital render. So I was sending him ideas like these for inspiration. This was the first draft, which I liked, but it needed straighter lines to get that low rider style. Along with maybe some silver inlays under that gold. After a little back and forth, he came up with this absolute masterpiece. Oh, Oh, I cannot wait to see this in real life. I have never seen anything so beautiful in my life. Is that the first time you've ever done that? No. No? You've cut a box in the middle? Oh. No, I guess not. Yeah, it is the first time. Nice. <laughs> Box floor has now been cut out and it's time to figure out how this dancing bed setup is going to work. We're like trying to explain it and then we're like, okay, we'll draw it up. And it's just the only way to really fully understand is to build a model. So I'm going to just build a model. Starting with a piece of cardboard like usual. Cardboard suitcase full of dreams. Here's the completed Z rack. As you can see, it looks like a Z there. How this actually works. Imagine the cab of the truck is here. The box is here. Box tilts back and then it tilts up one stage up another stage and then all of a sudden the box is way up here now what's different about this down here is the crane this crane actually slides 
that single stage to the end. So when this is set up, it's gonna look something like that with the box floating there. And then under here is the bearing. So all of this will be up here, extended out, and then it's also gonna be pivoting like that, which means that we can put it far out to one corner, get all the weight distributed all the way back there and get that front wheel in the air. We decided on using a deck mounted crane because it's already on a bearing and has hydraulic rams for both lift and extension. Took a few months, but eventually I scooped up the perfect one at Richie Bro's auction. And here it is. Oh, it's really big. Really, really big. Oh my God, it's huge. That's what she said. <laughs> 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 Nothing to see here, officer. I thought about the Mega Mini every day of 2023, but ended up having to pull the plug on bringing it to SEMA last year after shifting my goal to affording the purchase of my dream 60 acre property, which after a year living in the mezzanine of my garage, I finally accomplished. Unfortunately, the project that took the biggest hit on that was the Mega Mini, which I had to push back another year to SEMA 2024. One of the things I did with Chain Smoker that took a lot of time was obviously welding the chains. And that was kind of my job. I did every single chain weld on that truck but I didn't do everything else I had a lot of help with the other stuff so on this truck I was wondering what exactly I could do that can contribute in the same sort of artistic time spending way and I have figured that out I know exactly what I'm gonna do I'm going to be engraving and I've just started I've picked up my first rotary tool so there's two different types there's pneumatic which is a cylinder that goes back and forth and it cuts into it and then there's rotary which spins essentially that's what a dremel is so I bought my first dremel set up here my first ever piece I've engraved that into there and I think it looks pretty good I'm not gonna be doing a whole lot of rotary style engraving it'll be a lot of this type of style there a big moment has come i've got everything set up in order for me to now do engraving it's gonna be interesting i've never done it before and i'm about to try to engrave this entire truck <laughs> or at least the suspension of it and here we have my first attempt at using my pneumatic engraver. Made before I even knew the chisels had to be sharpened first. So after this fail, I decided I needed some professional mentorship. Well, that didn't, uh... That didn't turn out. Right into SEMA 2023, and while the Mega Mini's not here, I sure am in search of engraving ideas and inspiration. This Impala here is as good as it gets for a low rider. This is a 10. 9.9, just because I don't like giving 10. There's always a little bit of room for improvement, but man, there's not much. Like, this is crazy. Full undercarriage is just exceptional. Mirrors all underneath, full fuel tank. Surprised you didn't do that tank. There's the 0.1% right there. <laughs> full exhaust is done. All the underbody for the engine, all the pumps. Even the full radiator, there's gold up top. Like, this is crazy. Like, this dash is just Exceptional. This thing is just next level. You wouldn't want to take this out of the garage. Walked up and Hanro is doing his thing. Very cool. All Dremel work. It's a lot of time and a lot of skill to do that. I stumbled on this truck at SEMA 2023, which blew me away with its high level of engraving and was the first and only time I've seen engraving implemented on a mall crawler style truck. I'll be honest that I was a little disappointed when I saw it because I had wanted to be the first to break this mold, but I'm also happy because it looks incredible and further proves that there's a hunger for this style of build. This continues forward the evolution of the low rider and mall crawler fusion, which is great. However, it's also one step further forward without me, only adding to the importance of showcasing my ideas of combining the dancing bed with the lowrider style paint job, engraved accessories, suicide doors with shaved door handles, and three wheeling, all on the Mega Mini for SEMA 2024. Or else risk having someone else do it first. Three weeks later. It is now the end of November 2023, and we are moving out of this shop, and that means that we gotta move this piece, which has been sitting here for a very long time. <laughs> unloaded in the bigger of the new shops. Here we have the Quonset shop, absolutely filled to the brim with stuff. And when I say filled to the brim, I mean like filled to the brim. But it'll look nice when we're done. And let's do that real quickly. Oh, it didn't work. Much better. Here we are many months later, and we're finally pulling the Mega Mini into the other shop. Trying. 
We've got an interesting setup here because there's still no steering. Oh, she's going. But it's steering, it's working. Beautiful. It's crane time. Got the box off and we are trying to figure out what is gonna go down in order to make this work. So this cross member here is gonna have to come out and then we're gonna take the bearing from the crane and build a new cross member down here and then that's gonna go here and then it's gonna sit about there and then we're gonna have to cut the stages to the crane so that the end of it is here and figure out the hydraulic rams that are inside of it because before it would have gone out really far so the rams are gonna have to be shortened. We have no idea what it looks like inside of that crane. We have no idea how this is gonna work but we're gonna figure it out. If we fail, we die. Crane has been disassembled. That is now the main piece for it. And we're just building up some tires to figure out where the base of that is gonna have to be built into the frame for this. This guy's cut out of here now. Kind of just making it up as we go. <laughs> Uncharted territory. Pretty cool. There she goes. So the hydraulic arm there, there's just a single stage. It's gonna be high enough altogether. Never high enough, true, true. Oh boy, this is getting more real by the minute. <laughs> Sitting in its relative home. You can see how tall that is. That's all gonna have to change. I'm gonna have to chop all that down. This is gonna be an interesting setup, no doubt about it. That is something of an understatement. It's the end of April and I am in Rancho Cucamonga. The same way that I flew halfway around the world to see Shamak for the best tattoo that I could possibly get, I did the same thing here to come to engrave it because this is the absolute best engraver. This is Hernan's shop. Heading into the showroom here. There's our man Hernan right there. Check out this stroller. There's a matching one that he's got at the Peterson Museum. Look at this twisted metal handle. Who even thinks of that? So cool. Seems like every single thing he's telling me, low rider of the year this, low rider of the year that. That's why he's the goat. He started off teaching me how to sharpen a chisel, which is an art on its own, before we went on to doing some straight lines. Made two pieces on the first day, one on aluminum and one on steel. And I got a lot of respect for the master engravers. This takes a lot of skill and time. Second day mainly consisted of some secret techniques before I hit the road, but not before making one more stop. While I'm in the LA area, it only made perfect sense for me to stop at this place right here, the legendary Hoppo suspension. We've got to figure out the Z-Rack on the Mega Mini. Why reinvent the wheel? Oh yeah, low rider heaven. You guys have been around for what, 30 years now? Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. That's how you know you're doing it right, if you can last 30 years. Oh, look at this engraving. Hell yeah. That looks fantastic. Stock on stock. We need a bunch of this stuff. Look at how cool that is. The main reason for my trip to Hoppo's was to measure the Z-Rack, because we've got to figure out how it's all going to come together in that small of a space. Unfortunately, Alex was not here today, so I didn't actually film in the back, but I did get the Grand Tour. Laser cutters, CNC's, they got absolutely everything and anything. In a world of pure imagination. Back in Calgary and the interior is out to begin work on the suicide doors. If you remember from before, the previous owner had got a single suicide door hinge over here and they didn't do that side at all. So we are fixing it by doing both sides. However, rather than have this single hinge set up because before the door was actually a little bit floppy, just hanging off of this and there was a lot of stress on it, just opted for a double hinge setup. Twice as strong. Kale's currently working on it on that side over there, which is the better side to start from because it hasn't already been worked on from the previous owner there. Like you can see here, this is the door striker for the, it opening that side. And let's go take a look, see what uh, what's going on. Hey there, you are so cute. So we got these door pockets cut out. This is the hinge structure that the hinges are gonna be pivoting off of. 
These pockets are recessed back in the jam and the hinges will come out from there. Sick. So we're gonna leave dual hinges both sides. Three hours later. So we got these kind of mocked up and tacked in place. These are actually the pockets that get welded into the door itself. Cut some recesses for those trying to hang on to our factory poles, but we got a little bit of interference still. I'm gonna do a tiny bit of trimming, but once the door can sit flush, we'll do some tack welds and undo the front hinges and swing her open. Hell yeah. If you look at Kale's work closely here, he's had to do an angle on that along within here so that it can line up flush with these pieces. Also had to build a whole new lip along this door so that it'll open without overlapping the other one. There's so many little small details you really don't even think about. The next day. For the first time ever, the passenger side of this truck is now a suicide door. All right, hinges are all off here. I have to figure out how to line it up and then I'm gonna chop into this, put the striker there. This side looks all done. Lots of support bracing, gusseting in there in order to make this as strong as possible. This is about the strongest stuff I've ever seen. This is a entire section of another mega cab. The previous guys who suicided the driver's side rear door actually used a portion of factory filler to put the striker kind of on the other side. I like how they did that, so we're gonna copy that for this side. This is going to end up lining up with that pinch weld there and then welding the two inner pieces together and then welding the outer layer to the inner pieces and then we're going to box it all in. Beautiful. Yeah. Safety first. Oh god. <laughs> You're filming me now, shit's going sideways. Make the weld, grind it down. Looks real good. Yeah, looks like a big butt crack. Yeah, butt crack. The new butt crack. <laughs> Some work to go, but that will do the trick. For the past few months, we've been working on the Mega Mini truck with the plans to get it done for SEMA 2024. Building custom rides is a hobby. By trade, I'm a car dealer, and it's my car dealings that pay for my builds. Unfortunately, in the last six months or so, the bubble has burst in the used car market, and the prices have gone straight to the floor, meaning I have over 40 vehicles in my inventory that I paid pre-burst pricing for, like that right there, that I'm now taking big losses on. Still on a selling spree, but what will sell and for what price isn't up to me. With us doing our absolute best, the goal is still SEMA 2024, but with just over four months remaining, I'm not sure if we're realistically going to finish for this year. I'm certainly not willing to put my company on the line to get the build done. I've already done that with Chainsmoker, who's nearly bankrupt me twice, along with getting assaulted with a wrench two days before SEMA, sending myself to the hospital on three separate occasions, and physically wasting away after building Chainsmoker version one, all just to get down to Vegas for the SEMA deadline. Check out the Chainsmoker version one and version two videos for those stories. And there's no way I'm putting myself in that corner again. That all being said, Kale's going full time over the next four months before SEMA. And I'll be busting my ass on the dealership side of things to keep everything above water until then. So will we get the mega mini truck done in time for SEMA 2024? And if not, will it end up getting the redemption that it so badly deserves? <laughs> I sure hope so, but only time will tell. So subscribe and tag along for the ride.